Hello, everybody. This is Pamela. And this is Tracy. And we are here to discuss how business really works. So today we have a special treat for you. I call it our gangster marketing episode. <laughs> it's really all about an approach to getting clients and getting customers that kind of takes after the drug dealer model. And we're going to go into that. And um, hopefully people won't be put off by the topic because I think it's very compelling and it shows exactly what you can accomplish if you prove your value in the marketplace. So let's explore this seedy underworld of consulting. Just kidding. I'm going to actually tell you a story about my experience and why I wanted to do this topic today on this show. Some of you may have seen videos that I've done with a colleague, Kyle Rollins. He owns a digital branding and marketing agency here in Atlanta called Mammoth Solutions. Kyle and I did a show called Mammoth TV, where we talked about um, more technical issues than Tracy and I cover. We went into keyword research and different marketing topics, stuff like that. All that had to do with what he does in his business. And it did really well. It got some good response. We did it for a while. Then life got busy. We both kind of went our separate ways and did other things. We always maintained a really good working relationship, however. So during the time when we kind of let the show drop off, Kyle kept saying that he was getting a lot of good reaction to it. We were posting it on his website. Uh, we had a YouTube channel and he kept seeing some traffic coming in from those videos. And finally, he actually gained a client who had watched one of the videos that we had done and contacted Kyle and said that he wanted to work with him based upon the video that Kyle had done with me. Fast forward to last week. So Kyle and I haven't done videos in quite a while. They're still up on YouTube. We actually have them in a playlist on the How Business Really Works channel. So you can see what we've done already, but it's been a while. So we haven't done a video, I think, since last year. Last week, Kyle calls me and he says, I wanna hire you. I want you to do videos for me, just like we did before, but I'm gonna pay you. We're gonna work out the details, your rate, the number of hours, how many episodes. I want to get Mammoth TV back and going, and I actually want to hold myself accountable and give you a paycheck for it. <laughs> and I was like, great, this is fantastic. I love doing these videos. Kyle and I have a good on-screen chemistry. So everything was right with the world. At the end of this conversation, he said, you know why I'm calling you, don't you? And I said, well, yeah, you liked the videos that we did. And he said, yes, but it's more than that. He said, you pulled the drug dealer move on me. <laughs> I was like, what? what do you mean I pulled the drug dealer move on you? He said, you did these videos for free. Nobody got paid. There was no exchange of money for these. We both went into it because we wanted to do it. And it was interesting to us. And we wanted to put this value into the world. And he said, did this for free. You did a great job. You proved that you have the interview skills to draw information out of me that I might not have thought of saying on camera. And finally, I got business from them. I saw the value that you were doing. And then you took it all away. <laughs> you, you went off and did a different show. And, and he knew I was going to do some other things and put Mammoth TV to the side. So it wasn't a bad parting of the ways or anything like that. But the upshot was that there was no more Mammoth TV for a while. And he felt the absence of that show in his business. And he said, you gave me something great, I loved it, and then you took it away, and now I want more. And that's what I'm calling the drug dealer model of getting clients. Now, I did not intend it to work out that way. I didn't want to set Kyle up for something and then pull it out from under him. That's not at all how I wanted to go about doing things. Um, and actually, a lot of the bottleneck with doing more of those videos was on Kyle's end. So. We had a few discussions and I started doing how business really works with Tracy. And so we decided to table it for a while. But he did feel that absence of this value in his business and it eventually led him back to me. And by then I was the obvious choice to do this work for him. So that is my story. And I think there are some valuable lessons in here. I now have a client that was somebody that I had just done a sort of a hobby thing with before. And now he came to me and gave me his business. So Tracy, hearing this story, what's your reaction? Why do you think this works? I'm, I'm laughing. <laughs> I mean, I'm honestly laughing because it is so true. It is. Give something to people and they love it. And then you withhold it and they're not getting it anymore. It makes them want it even more. Mm -hmm. 
if you think about it, this is done a lot. Look at companies that have made a living off of sampling. You go into places like Publix or Costco, and, and they're constantly sampling to people, and then samples are gone. You have a choice. If you want to keep tasting that wonderful taste, you have to buy it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we talk about that a lot when it comes to content creation and authority building and that sort of thing. And I think one of the people that is really fantastic at it is Derek Halpern. Yes. Because Derek will, leading up to the launch of a product, he will come out with the most informative videos and articles. And he just teaches you so much before you ever buy a course that when it's time to buy that course and all of a sudden you realize you're not going to be getting all that goody anymore, it makes you that much more likely to buy that course. Mm -hmm. So I think he's an expert at it. Mm -hmm. But I kind of started laughing when you're telling the story because I realized, wow, I'm doing this to people and I don't even know that I'm doing it. It's (laughs) not something I've consciously thought about. It's interesting being a consultant and a business coach The majority of the clients I get are either word of mouth or they have come to me through the content I put out there and they already feel like they know me and that sort of thing. And once the initial conversation happens, they're more or less ready to buy before it ever happens. But here locally, if I drank every cup of coffee someone wanted to buy me in order to pick my brain, I want to probably be dead from caffeine every day, (laughs) but I'd love to give, you know, I have no problem with giving and helping, but when I have a conversation with someone, I pay attention to whether they do something with it. So it's kind of like, you know, it's not going to do a drug dealer any good to give you free drugs if you take them home and put them in a drawer. He needs you to consume them. Well, when I have a conversation with you and, and I provide value and I help you move your business forward, do something with it. And I have this undefined habit I guess it is of when I have a conversation with someone I look to see if they implement it and if they do I'll keep having the conversations if they don't I know I'm wasting my time and theirs and I won't continue to have those conversations but I also am only going to have the conversations so many times Mm, yeah before It's you're taking advantage of me. This is what I do to put food on the table and a roof over my head. Right. So I basically cut them off. I don't do it rudely or anything like that. I just don't make the time. I'm too busy. So I just realized I'm doing this to people (laughs) and I didn't even (laughs) realize I was doing it to people because it is interesting that the majority of them who've actually implemented the stuff we've discussed We'll come back and pay. No questions asked. Yeah, absolutely. They were just going to get it for free as long as they could. Right. So, yeah, I just, I just, I'm sitting here, you know, trying not to laugh out loud the whole time you're telling the story because it's like, (laughs) holy crap. (laughs) It is true. And I think the way you implement the approach that you take and the one that I took with Kyle, they are very different. And we did those actions for different reasons. You know, I didn't leave Kyle high and dry. We both agreed that we had other priorities that we wanted to work on. So although we left off, in neither case, neither Tracy's case nor mine, was it a malicious thing, or we were trying to be manipulative. It's just kind of the way that things worked out. And what we want you to focus on is that you are bringing value. The reason this works is because I brought a lot of value to Kyle's business. He actually landed clients directly from the videos that we did. Tracy brings a ton of value to her clients and people who may be prospective clients. And that's what we want you to concentrate on is the value that you're bringing. And don't worry about the results. I didn't land Kyle as a client until a year later. But during that entire year, he was thinking about how this could serve his business again. And when he was ready, he called me. So don't try and create an outcome. Just provide the value. I think there's a lot to, you know, not actually taking it away. Uh, you know, maybe then you're kind of modifying that gangster drug dealer business model. But when you provide value... Like Pamela said, that is so key. It has to be valuable. These 
you see so many articles and videos and stuff on the internet that's vague. Mm -hmm. Don't get into the details, just kind of wispy clouds over a topic. And I've gotten to where I won't even read articles put out by certain people or organizations because I know it's going to be fluff. Mm. I know that you are really, really skilled at writing a great headline and sucking me in, but I know when it comes right down to it, I'm going to read six or seven hundred words and I'm going to go, um, I didn't gain anything. Yeah. So the real key is add value. Give some people something actionable. If you're going to go to the trouble of creating content, putting your work out there in the world, make it actionable. Make it something that people want. And if you do, they're not going to have trouble spending money getting more of that. And like in our case, we're content creators. So it's not create content and then just stop the content and hope people will start paying at that point. Mm -hmm. It's create the content that provides enough value that they know that anything they pay for is going to provide tremendous value. And it's kind of a modified version of this drug dealer business model. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I think it'll work. You know, it's funny. Edward Tufte once said the only, only drug dealers and software companies will call their customers users. <laughs> well, maybe we all need to start thinking that way. They are the users of our services, our content, our products. And we need to treat them with a lot of respect and give them a lot of value for their money. There is one other area that when I, I heard that quote, I thought, well, actually, web designers think that way. Because we have this thing called a user experience. Mm. We think about how the user of the website is. But yet, the business behind that website doesn't think of that person as their user. So Pam, do you have any other examples of people that are using the drug dealer business model? Has it been used on you? Uh, let's see. Has it been used? Well, you've kind of used it on me <laughs> Un <laughs> unwitting unwittingly. Um, so yes, you have used this drug dealer model on me a little bit. Uh, when we were in our mastermind together, you had offered to help out members of the mastermind with some coaching if we then gave you an honest review of your services and what we thought. And so I took you up on that offer. So no money was exchanged, but you did provide tremendous value. And so when we started doing How Business Really Works, I, A, I already knew that you absolutely knew what you were talking about, not only from being in the mastermind with you, but from the advice that you had given me. And I saw the results in myself. I became more focused. I chose some th specific things to work on, some goals to go after. Um, and you didn't ask anything back. So now here we are doing how business really works. And I'm happy to put in the work for this. Even though still no money is exchanging hands between us. It's not that kind of a relationship. But I believe in you. And I believe in your knowledge and your skills. And so I'm happy to be your partner in this and your test case in this because I know what your value is. So yeah, you've kind of done that with me. Um, I'm not actually, I don't do drugs, so like I can't, I can't point to literal drug dealers, but, um, uh, well, think about companies that have sent you samples. Yes, it's true that there are companies who have sent me samples of their things. In fact, my favorite skincare company, Paula's Choice, whom we talked about in a previous episode, I think it was one of our predictors of success episodes, and we'll link you to that, um, predictors of business owner success, I think. When I've ordered stuff from them, you always get free samples in every order. So by now, I've been using her products for years. I've probably sampled almost every product <laughs> that she has in her line, Um you know, I take advantage of those samples and they always work well for me. Everything that I bought from them has worked well on my skin, but that's kind of the whole thing is she'll send you samples with your order so that you can see how good it is and then you buy. So yeah, that's a kind of a smaller scale drug dealer model right there. It's the extreme drug dealer model. Mm -hmm. She sends you a sample. You love it. It works great. Yep. And the only way you're going to get it again is if you purchase it. <laughs> that's right. Probably this happens more than we realize. 
And I challenge our listeners to pay attention to this in their lives. See how vendors, advertisers, people who want to pitch you, whomever it is, pay attention to whether they are doing this, adding this value, and then kind of dangling that carrot so that you will buy more. And it's totally legitimate. I mean, this is a great way to get business. It's totally legit. I'm all for it. Yeah. The only thing that makes it bad for drug dealers is the fact that the product is something that you become addicted to that you can't not That's right. have the self-control to buy. Yeah. Whereas legitimate businesses, they're going to use the exact same model. It's just they're not, they don't have that nefarious underground CD. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to hook you to something that's going to destroy your life. Right. Their product isn't going to put you in the hospital and cause you to be brain dead or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, okay, maybe maybe fast food and, you know, junk food and stuff like that, mm. sort of, mm-hmm. but, you know, not really. Yeah. It's a different thing. It, there, it is, it is. That's a whole different episode, probably different, several episodes. <laughs> Everybody knows that highly successful people are against junk food and all for eating healthy and exercising. Yep. So, you know, take that for what it is. Coincidence? I don't think so. So I would like to give people a Chinese proverb to noodle on in between this episode and our next. The proverb goes, it is easy to get a thousand prescriptions, but hard to get one single remedy. And we want you guys to be the remedy, not a prescription. I was the remedy for Kyle. Tracy has been the remedy for many people, including me. We want you to put your value out into the world, and when it comes time for somebody to sign on the dotted line, they are going to come running to you because there is no other remedy. You're the remedy, not the prescription. Yeah, you know, Salvador Dali used to say, I don't do drugs, I am drugs. Be the drug for your clients. Let your product be the drug, let your service be the drug. Think seriously about this gangster business model. (laughs) It has a lot of legitimacy to it. So our question for you today is, are you using the gangster business model? Has it ever been used on you? If so, tell us about it. We would like to hear. We're collecting our stories on the gangster business model. So head on over to HowBusinessReallyWorks.com and leave us a comment on this episode. Or if you'd like to give us a comment in private, just click on the contact page button and give us a message there. Pam and I would love to hear from you. Yes, we would. And don't forget to like this episode. Please share this episode and let us know if you're listening in iTunes. Let us know what you think. Leave us a review and hit those star buttons. It will really help us to be found so that we can help more people just like yourself to build their businesses and be successful and give value, take it away, and then give it again. (laughs) (laughs) No, we won't do that to you. We're going to keep giving value, and we hope that you stick with us for all of it. So thank you for listening, and we will see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.